There are derby scenes, and then there are derby scenes. Both are heavily policed to try and prevent trouble. We've come to Sweden to see what makes this possible. In a league that prides itself on its atmosphere. So tomorrow's AIK versus Hammerby. First versus second in a derby we've been looking to attend for ages. But first things first, we're going to speak to the active fans, some of the fan clubs, and find out the good and the bad of policing in Swedish football. Generally speaking in football, I mean, what do you think the relationship is between football fans and police? I think it's like all around the globe, it isn't the best. The Swedish uh, support the culture is very young, and that also goes hand in hand with the police. They don't really know yet how to control it. The people here are not afraid of other supporters. We are afraid of the police, if any. In Sweden, the last couple of years, they have started to reduce the standing sections. That's one thing that they try to do, but, but obviously it doesn't work. We want to have a good atmosphere, but we don't want the pyrotechnics. So we have used the reduction because of the danger. The only solution to have no pyrotechnics is to have no people inside the stadium where the game is played. And that is not what we want from the police either. From a supporter's point of view, we want pyro. We want people feeling that they have a purpose. And who gets punished when you reduce the capacity of the main ultra stand or the main supporter stand by 2,000 seats? It's the new ones that should be able to come and see the games that you punish because the hardcore supporters, the ultras groups and everything, they will be there week in, week out, with reduce, without reduce. Of course. So, so I mean, you punish the wrong people by doing that. So. If there are less people in the stands, that for example the fire department have a better chance of working efficiently if mm. something happens. Generally across football there's a culture of ACAB. Mm -hmm. There's clearly not an easy relationship between police and football fans. No. Would you say the culture still is that there is a negative perception of football fans on behalf of the police just because of day to day encounters? Uh, well we have the dialogue police, we call them Evenamangs Polisen. Their job is to communicate with supporters. Mm -hmm. They always try to build some kind of relationship with the supporters. And they always try to give the police officers the counterpart perspective. If the police acts like this, the supporters will feel like this. If you have aggressive police, you'll have aggressive supporters. So we try to get some kind of knowledge of how they react to mm. how, we, uh, how we work. Even if we as a supporter don't feel that the police listen to us, we still need to keep this dialogue open. The dialogue is the way to move forward to improve for everything. For me, you had some situation where the police go up on the terrace. That's maybe the most dangerous thing uh, that could happen to a football game. We don't uh, go down to the stands because then we will start a riot. It's up to the AIK in this case to use their personnel to work in the stands. Mm -hmm. So we only go into the stands if it's really, really necessary. You know, outside of the stadium, you doesn't see the police that much. A couple of years ago, you saw them everywhere. Most of the times, I don't even notice them. And I think maybe that's uh, the so best good. policing, right? We are heading in such a great direction. They're still there, they're doing the job. Everything is going smooth and safe. Now, what do you think it is that sort of attracts people to this idea of community and this idea of coming to the game? Well, I can only assume, and this is not from the police perspective, but I guess it's about belonging to a group and creating a stronger bond. We are actually making people feel like they belong somewhere. Our league, Allsvenskan, it's not the best football, but we have uh, the best fans. The Swedish like the culture around football. When you think about Swedish football in other cultures, you never think about the good football teams, you think about the fans. What we actually have that is great is supporter culture. Even in the 70s and 80s you had uh, uh, people singing and, and, and uh, making a culture, you know? Ah, it's a lifestyle. I mean, I can lose my girlfriend, I can lose my job, I can lose everything, but I would still have my football club. The hate's growing, and that's a problem that we need to fix. So the SLOs are, are a key player in this. Yeah, I would say their role is, is huge. A couple of years ago, I think the problem was bigger. I think the SLOs have done a massive job to keep the hate going in other directions or to keep it down, actually. What are the dynamics of the role of the SLO? Uh, my main thing is service to the supporters and helping them to get the best out of the, the experience. So they understand uh, what the supporters need 
and uh, what uh, they want. I talk to the supporters, they know I talk to the police. We use the SLO and we try to get some kind of information to the supporters. Our SLOs are uh, from a supporter background, so they are like pre-ultras. Everybody knows these people. They will listen to them because they have their confidence. Right. So it's a great link for us between the supporters and the police officers. Right. But if I didn't have the trust from supporters, I can't work. We have like two SLOs. We have good contact um, before every game, every away game. I know basically how the supporters work. He keeps us updated in what's happening. Okay, where are they? How are they going to the game? How can we help them come there in a safe way? How do you work with the police to try to change their perception of fans being seen as criminals? I mean, is that some Thing that you can do as an SLO? Not every policeman or woman uh, are going to accept that our, that our supporters not are criminal. Right. And I mean, you even see them coming in right now, right? They're, they're, they're dressed for a worst case scenario. Right? So this outfit, yeah. I don't like it, but it's uh, about their security also. I, it's, it's my life. I love it. <laughs> it's very important. Yeah. Perfect, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's going to be maybe the biggest and most important derby in modern history, actually. It's uh, one of the most important games of, of the year. We're number one, four points clear. Uh, after us, we have Hammar B. And, and uh, yeah, this game is going to decide the season, I think. AAK feel like this is the year. And they put in a lot of money on mm. transfers and in the squad to win this year. To lose this game, it, it would be a massive hit for us. I would say that Hammerby is the, the club of the people from Stockholm City. Of course, the rivalry has been more intense this year. There is a commuter train um, that is booked for Hammerby fans. You will get packed with all the supporters going with this train. You will actually walk a big distance to the arena. Mm. And that sets up a tension, right? I mean, it's a derby, so if you want to find trouble, you will find trouble. Do you have kind of precautions set in place for a certain result on the pitch could lead to a certain situation in the stands? Would you prefer to see one thing or the other? If uh, Hammerby wins, you have a, a large, larger amount of people who will leave the game disappointed. So and that will probably make it easier for them to uh, go fighting. On. AK winning on a false penalty in the last minute, that's not, a, that's not going to be a good situation, right? So we're in the underbelly of the Friends Arena right now. The SLOs for AIK and Hamilton just walked in to have a meeting with the police and the dialogue police, uh, how they're going to organize things ahead of this match. So AIK, this main group, is just arriving at the stadium now. There's only actually five police officers marching with them. This is the main group of AIK marching through the center of town. Hammerby is coming just around the block in about 20 minutes, and it's calm as anything. Super impressive. So right now, if you look behind, they're having a security meeting. And then you get level two. This is the cops in full rank here. It's almost more tense inside the stadium with the people working on this match than it feels outside with the supporters going to the ground. There's just so much coordination to having like a low impact level of security around this game. We're in front of the away end, people streaming in, in the middle of traffic. You've only got three police cars regulating the whole situation. You've got smoke going off behind me, which looks fucking brilliant, marking their end. It's well organized, it's fairly peaceful, but inside it's going to be absolute mayhem. Here it is, it's the big show! Choreography one way, choreography the next way, and get ready. players weren't meant to be legal in this game, but they've come in. And you know what? They set the stage for an unbelievable atmosphere. Fucking impressive as anything. It's all illegal. It's all made in. And it's happening. And it's making this atmosphere so much better. Five minutes past three. The game still hasn't kicked off because of all the smoke in the arena. They knew coming into it that it would work that way. But you know what? It's just built for more atmosphere. Where's 
the danger zone. The police behind me look like they're falling asleep. One disallowed goal for Hammerby, one missed penalty for AIK. It's just been a back and forth. Hammerby being incredible, AIK being incredible. This is fantastic. On a nil nil game, the supporters of the narrative. Okay, goes up one nil. These people are gutted. That side is fucking erupting. This is what it looks like when you're up one nil in the 85th minute in a derby in Stockholm. and mathematically basically win the league this year for the first time in nine years. But the real story, it's the supporters. It's the atmosphere you get here in Swedish football. It's absolutely incredible. It's been spine tingling from the first minute to the last minute of the game. It comes down to the fact that these supporters, they've grown a culture for dialogue. They've grown a culture for acting responsibly because they know the upside and the downside to what fan culture can be.